Hi, and welcome to the seventh episode of Smashing Apps. Now, we're recording this in the middle of April, and it's a very unusual time for the whole world. And that's going to make this episode slightly different in that we're not necessarily teaching in our classrooms at the moment. We're all kind of remote educating. Hopefully, we'll be able to share some great ideas and tips of what we do in our classrooms and outside of our classrooms. And I'm joined today by three amazing educators and great friends from all around the world. And I'm going to pass you over to Jacob, first of all, to introduce who he is. And we'll go from there. So, Jacob, over to you. Yeah. Uh, hello. Um, super excited to be with you today. I'm Jacob from uh, Denmark, and I am left the classroom after 10 years and work now more as freelance consultants with a lot of different schools around the world. And uh, that's also t- quite challenging at the moment and very, very interesting to see how we can progress and use technology in a better way. And I think that's more useful than ever right now. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got Alina. She's joining yeah. us as well today. Yeah, hi. I'm glad to be here with you. I'm an English teacher from Russia. I've been teaching for like seven years and working in the classroom. But for uh, the last three months, I've been working on creating uh, content for online school to teach uh, English uh, in an online format. And that's what I'm doing right now. Very interesting. Okay, perhaps we can talk more about that later on. That sounds really interesting. Um, And Levent, over to you. Hi, my name's Levent. Um, I teach in Hong Kong. I teach uh, film, music, and phys ed. Uh, Currently in my, I think, going into 11th week of online learning. So it's been uh, an interesting experience. And uh, I'm excited to chat with all of you guys today. Brilliant. Well, it's lovely to to see you all again. That's great. My name is Jacob. I teach computing in a primary school down in Cornwall. And at the moment, I'm kind of managing the remote learning strategy for our school. Um, So, yeah, like I say, today is going to be a slightly different episode in that we're not in the classroom at the moment. And it might be that some of our app choices reflect that. In fact, I know at least two or three of the apps today could well be good tools that you could use to create resources outside of the classroom. So we're going to pass straight over to Jacob. And I believe Jacob is going to show us just this little small app called Keynote. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I've also been uh, excited and feel the pressure because I know that uh, for some of you, you are say, uh, hardcore Keynote ninjas already <laughs> and know a lot about Keynote, and others say might uh, maybe be quite new to Keynote. So uh, mm-hmm. I'll try to keep it uh, quite simple today. I think for, for Keynote, it's uh, very important to remember that it's much more than just a, a slide show uh, for, for, pres- for presenting. I love to use uh, Keynote uh, in different ways. So that would be my main challenge for for the viewers to think about scenarios, how to use Keynote so that it's much more activating the the students or the learners. So I have, for example, for many years uh, used it for as I made some templates, uh, teaching design, for example, so that I make a Keynote, but instead of telling about the Keynote, they have to work with different logos. So there is a logo, but then they have to add different colors to it and work with the opacity and like that. Um, or a, a use case could be that they make interactive um, products so that they can, with the interactive links, uh, explore different functionalities. Or uh, in this case, it's an old painting by Goya. And then they can put small sound files in, in the different parts of the painting and then explain what the role is of the different characters or I've used it a lot with my students for app prototyping. Um, uh, other interesting use case, I think, is to create games uh, with, with Keynote. So to think about how it can be uh, interactive. So in this case, it's uh, one of my sons, actually, who made a, a game where he explores different uh, animals, what they are called in English and in Danish. And then you can tap on them, and then it shows both how it's spelled and, and how it's pronounced in the I think there's a lot of uh, great ways where, where uh, a keynote deck doesn't need to be a presentation. I have also had students making packaging design, and so it's very versatile. And I think it's just important to to think about how you can use it um, for for as a pre- presentation. I think there's a, a risk that we teachers stand in front of the class and talk for yeah. hours, mm-hmm. and no one wants actually to do that. So it's, I think it's much more interesting to look at Keynote how to uh, other students they can use it for, for 
So you can only give them a template and then from there they create the work and, and they add the value to the keynote deck. Mm -hmm. and I have a couple of small tips for the users uh, that I think okay. would be uh, helpful. Um, normally when we adjust heights, it's a very useful that you can tap on a uh, other object um, already on the slide and then match the sizes. I think that's a very, very helpful tip that is overlooked oh, by many. Okay. Okay. And also, when you are tapping or adjusting sizes, I think it's important to know that some shapes, they come with constraints proportions so that you are adjusting both the width and the height at once. But you can, in the, the settings, turn that off so that you can make a large cup of coffee or mm -hmm. a high <laughs> or whatever. Um, and also, when you resize objects, um, if you tap at the center of the object, we will actually resize it from the center. Um, that can also be a very nice way to, to resize things and get a bit of quicker workflow. Didn't know you could do that. But, I've learned something new straight away. <laughs> and, and if we tap at the center of our object first and then uh, outside of it, we can rotate it very easily okay. just with one finger. And, and So that's just some tips for, for creating a, 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 a quicker workflow. But if we tap at our object um, besides the center, and we can move it baby steps with one finger, and it's one pixels. If we use two fingers, we tap, move it with uh, 10 pixels at a time. So if you need to adjust and fine tune your slides, it's a very easy way. And with three fingers, it would be 20 pixels, and four fingers, uh, 30 pixels. That's a great tip. And then with the new update, there's a new way to select multiple objects. We used to tap one object, and then we could um, tap on the other objects we wanted to, hold the finger. But now we can actually tap outside of uh, the object and then drag uh, a rectangle over the, what? the objects and, and then very easily, for example, add, add a different color to those states or whatever. So I think that's a little uh, enhancement that is uh, really nice. So here's a little challenge where that would say, okay, what would 10% of those people be? And then the students can very easily select those. And you can then, if you have selected a group, actually hold on that group and then deselect uh, individual objects if you need to. So I think that's a very new, nice new feature. Um, we need to practice it. <laughs> and and uh, our other uh, very hidden feature, but often we group objects uh, in Keynote. But yeah. now if you tap on your group, you select the whole group, but actually you can then double tap on an element in that group and then you can actually modify it without uh, degrouping it. So that's no. also a, a super nice way to, 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 to edit the, the text or something. You don't need to degroup that's it anymore. That's so much longer. quicker, isn't it, than, than grouping and regrouping? It's giving a bit, much better workflow, much better. Wow. And then the same is very useful when you want to edit with a mask uh, or, or with a shape. When we want to uh, mask uh, an object, normally it can be very hard when if the object is under the, 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 the shape. Yeah. But we can actually just select the two objects and then afterwards uh, move it. Um, it makes it much easier, and, but it's also a very, very hidden feature. Mm. What I really like as well is students to make their own shapes. So the shape library is, is interesting and there's a lot of shapes, but the true creativity comes when they put the, the, the shapes together. Yeah. So here you can see uh, some different shapes from the shapes library. But when they start to edit the shapes, uh, then they can actually create this wheel that is on the other side with the Batman inspired rims. <laughs> it's all made of the, the, the other shapes. So. I think it's a great idea for, for students to, to make their own shapes um, and they can start to make shapes like uh, the building here, uh, the Bush Khalif from, from uh, Dubai, or mm -hmm. it could be a useful tool. I use this uh, shape for when I make rotations, uh, wheels, uh, so I can make shapes that have more functionality. And then I think it's a really, that's I think that's the last tip for today, but uh, when you uh, having a new shape and you want to add it to the shape library. You have this add a shape to shape library. 
Um, I often put multiple uh, shapes together that are often used together as one shape so that when I add it to the slide again, uh, I, I can easily edit it. So, so in this case, it's the Apple Pencil. Uh, I have added it as, as one shape, uh, but then I can easily break it apart and then I would very quickly give it different colors. And, and drag this over, for example, so that's easier to see that's the uh, Apple Pencil. So in that way, I can can I have prepared shapes in my shape library that is uh, I have all the elements that I then easily can break apart and and then edit together. And my very final tip should be that to use Keynote as a, a green screen effect together with iMovie. Uh, mm -hmm. Students can make very fine titles here. Uh, and the green screen doesn't need to be green, just find a, 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 a color and then these make that transparent and, and, and then they can draw in, in Keynote or, or use all the really fun animations and then make much beautiful, uh, very beautiful uh, film products. So uh, that would be the end for my speed round of tips for Keynote. <laughs> Thank you. That, a few really great tips in there. They're all good tips, but a few that I've never heard of before. So straight away, I'm now going to go and start practicing those grouping things and moving one inside the group and the new way of selecting multiple objects. That's that's so powerful. I think Keynote is is one of those apps which, unless you actually open it and play with it for a minute or two, you might just kind of pass it by as thinking, oh, that's just the presentations and never dive into it. But I think if you've if you've got an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac and you've got Keynote on there just sitting as an icon and you haven't used it before, people who are watching this need to just click on that. And I'm aware yeah. that we've got a lot of people watching this who will have used Keynote before, but equally, probably quite a few that haven't. And I think you said at the beginning, Jacob, that it is so much more than just a presentation tool, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's really important to explore those uh, possibilities mm. and especially think about how can the students start creating in Keynote. And and I, I couldn't imagine having an uh, iPad without Keynote on it. It would mm -hmm. be the first app that I would install always. Mm -hmm. But also just because it's so uh, versatile, it's uh, also a, a notes app for me where I, if I have an idea, I have a mm -hmm. Keynote deck for those and just sketch it down uh, very quickly. Uh, so because it's so versatile and, and, and so visual uh, and, and especially the animations, I think it's an interesting tool for the, for the students to activate their learning and, and mm -hmm. make small explainer videos or they really can can try to exp uh, explain a, a sequence of, of, of things happening or their thinking in, mm -hmm. in a small video and a small keynote deck. Uh, um, and then I, I like to use it yeah. in my teaching so that mm. because as a design uh, teacher, many of my colleagues, they would, introduce more complicated software to, to the students so that they can learn Adobe, Illustrator, Photoshop or something. And I like actually to keep it simple. Uh, from a design point, uh, I think it's much more important to have a focus on the design process and on the aesthetics and not on, on learning a new software. Uh, but also, when they learn a skill, they can use in every other subject immediately. So if they learn Photoshop there, Biology presentations will not become more beautiful from that necessarily. But if they are getting better keynote skills, uh, they can use it in every single subject and then in a lot of yeah, communications aspects of life. That's brilliant. I think it's such a good tool for teachers to use as well. And when we're not able to be in our classrooms and we're sending learning remotely, it's a really great way of creating eye-catching but simple graphics and, and information pages, isn't it? Levent and Alina, I noticed both of your faces light up at different tips that Jacob was sharing there. And that makes me think that perhaps you use Keynote as well. Can you give us an example perhaps of, of what benefit you found from Keynote or, or how you're using it with your classes? Yeah, I've used Keynote before, um, specifically for some like animations. Um, mm -hmm. Like he talked about, uh, Jacob talked about briefly um, some of the, uh, the green screen things, how you don't need the green screen, you can just take out the background and then just kind mm -hmm. of, uh, and have some things animate there. Um, so incorporating some of those simple tools built within to the app uh, and then like export, exporting that into something like iMovie or uh, whatever else, uh, WeVideo, whatever we're using at the time um, to just really add 
um, to, or to take their production to the next level, uh, Keynote mm -hmm. is really fantastic for something like that. Um, it adds a whole lot to just a production that would be very plain and just like a kid, for example, if we're doing a vlog or whatever else, um, uh, just a kid sitting in front of their camera, they could add a title sequence, they could add all sorts of effects. Mm. And so there's so much um, that uh, that my students can do with Keynote, um, uh, with the kind of the animation features and, and the, the video export features that come with, with Keynote. Uh, the, some of the tips that, that he was going over, um, I was I had never seen before. I was like, man, if I like <laughs> thinking back to some things that I've made in the past and like that yeah. one and moving it one pixel over at a time, uh, I was like blown away by some of the, I've seen you post some of your other tips and tricks on, on Twitter. And the, the very first one with the resizing, um, mm. I had seen before, but like some of the other new ones I hadn't yeah. seen. So I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Very cool. And, and that is what really amazed me that I have used Keynote nearly every day for 10 years. And of course, there's a, a lot of updates and so on. But, but still also, sometimes I discover a small hidden feature uh, that they maybe have been there for a couple of years without me noticing. There's so many layers in it, and it's so easy to have a, a, a good workflow there. So, so, Alina, what's your experience of Keynote? Have you um, have you used it before? Have you used it your children? Yeah, I use Keynote a lot, and I like that Keynote can be used for any idea. No matter what idea you have, Keynote can help you with it. You can create anything there. Mostly, we use it for creating um, like dictionaries in. Uh, interactive dictionaries so we add pictures we add a description of uh, this picture uh, uh, words in English and so it looks like a modern dictionary for kids and kids like to create dictionaries like that mm. and um, we had a problem of tapping every time for choosing uh, words and pictures and tap 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 every time yeah. So when you showed me that uh, you can group now uh, in an easy way, it was a great surprise for me. And <laughs> thank you for sharing. That. I like it so much. Oh, that's Brilliant. nice. Lovely to hear. Well, Jacob, and you. and you also, so uh, I just needed to say that some creative keynote projects could also end up on uh, your wall uh, in the background. If the viewers look at, at, at your wall in the background, you have this uh, world map. And I think that also made in Keynote. So just to show that, yes, that was made in Keynote, Keynote products, they don't need to, to be a plain presentation. They can also <laughs> end up as print and as physical <laughs> items on the wall. <laughs> no, it's, it's such a powerful tool. I remember someone I spoke to um, over the summer said that Keynote is like the Swiss Army knife of apps and that it, it looks like one thing, but it can do so many more. And I think yeah. that's a really great way of describing it because it is so powerful. And it's it's really good for children to get involved with and adults and it's it's just a fantastic app and I'm glad we've had you on the show to to explain about Keynote. I think no one's been brave enough so far to to come on and talk about it. So thank you for doing that and, and stepping up and sharing Keynote with the world. If we so, have also just scratched the surface. That's absolutely a special 24-hour edition. <laughs> Maybe that's one for the future if the lockdown continues for too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alina, I'm going to pass over to you now, if that's okay. Already. Uh, so, as I've already mentioned, I'm an English teacher, and as an English teacher, my main problem is to make kids learn new words. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's like a drill, so you have to remember, remember, remember. It's not very interesting, and students don't like it. Uh, and uh, when I found Bitboard, it was a great surprise for me. Now, it's one of my favorite apps, because okay. it's on learning uh, words into like gamification and it makes uh, our lessons fun and very useful on, uh, on the same time. Uh, so when uh, this board helps you to create oh, cards with words, you have to add plus and you can uh, create a board. You create a name, for example, we are learning words for animals. So mm -hmm. I call it animal and now I can create cards here I can add uh, I can go web search right from the app and I can use photos from al my albums anyway it's very useful so I go to my recent photos take an elephant I can resize it here make it any size I like it I can oh elephant like this 
stress done. So I have elephant here. Now I add text. I will uh, name, write the name of this word. It is elephant. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to do it like this. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a trick. Uh, um, okay. And I can add uh, an audio recording. So I have a microphone here. And when I, I uh, press the red button, I can record my voice. Uh, when I do it with my class, students can record their voices and they have their own pronunciation here. So I can ask you, Jacob, to record your perfect British uh, <laughs> accent and I need you to say elephant. Elephant. So now I have this in my <laughs> card. Uh, I can also draw here something like this. So kids like it very much. You can add your own vision. Then if you need one more word, you can add plus again, and you do it the same. Let's add, I have a line here. At least we have two words. It looks a bit um, uh, long, but now you will, you will understand why I do it so long. Okay. Uh, a line. And now I can press this button. And look how many games I have to use it in my classroom with these cards. For example, I can use, I like photo touch. I press photo touch. Align. I have my cards here and I need to hear what is said and choose the right card. So align, I choose this one. Elephant, I have this card. And at the end of the task, you have a record with percent of uh, how many tasks you've done, and you can send it on email to parents of your students, and it's very uh, convenient to use it like this. Uh, if you are not satisfied with this game, you can choose, for example, a spelling game, and you can spell it here. It is uh, in a second. It doesn't take you any time to change the yeah. time. It's here, right in the app. Um, or you can, for example, um, make a word search and find the words here. So any types for learning new words, any possible games are here, not only for remembering words, but also for using. So you have a story time, you have pictures here, and you can create stories with these pictures. You say, once upon a time, I saw an elephant. An elephant went to a lion and they and so you create a story here with your cards and when we use it in my classroom I always ask my students to create their own boards sometimes they don't use photos they draw <laughs> and this is the creativity so when I see uh, animals uh, furniture any words drawn in the vision of a child it looks like from a fairy tale so it's like mm, they are learning English they are creating they are remembering new words they are speaking and I like this app because it's very simple and it's very handsome and it doesn't take you a lot of time to create it and you can use it in very different ways it's very similar with Keynote um, but it's more uh, specialized for learning new words Wow yeah. That that's first of all a really clear presentation of the app, and it's you can see exactly how that could be used in almost any classroom. I, I already am thinking about all the different classes who could benefit from that. Yes, and uh, there is a catalog of already created words from ah. teachers over the world. You can yeah. uh, go and search something for you. And today, before this session, I was looking through this catalog. There were words for maths, for science, <laughs> for physics. So now it's um, an app for different subjects, and I like it. Brilliant. Have you, have you two come across this, Jacob Levent? Have you, have you come across Bitsboard before? No. no. It was new to me. Um, but I, I, I thought about, uh, while, uh, while you presented, that this could be also really, really interesting uh, doing this lockdown uh, or when working remotely. I think a lot of teachers now, they have this one-to-one -one interaction with all their kids, and the kids have those individual tasks. 
But I thought this could also be a really great way to let kids make games or learning games for each other mm -hmm. so that they have a much more social uh, learning experience so that I could make a game about animals like you showed us and the other kid could make uh, something about math and, so on, and then we could swap games and play each other's games and, and, and mm -hmm. so that there could be this creative challenge in both creating that children create games for each other uh, and, and that some older students maybe create games for the younger students and so on and mm -hmm. that could both maybe reduce the workload for the teachers but also give this uh, feeling of being a part of a learning community for the kids uh, as well. Yeah, that's a great idea. I like it. Uh, I, I just thought, it, I haven't seen that before, but uh, definitely is, uh, some very, very interesting uh, possibilities there. Mm -hmm. no, can, all the really kids, uh, can all the kids uh, share their uh, stuff with the world or would they only share it with their own classroom if they have made a new board or uh, sharing options? Uh, they can save it in a catalog and share it with the classroom or with the world as yeah. they like. Perfect. Brilliant. I, I, yeah, I can really see so many uses for that, in, especially in the primary school that I'm working in, with the younger children, those learning a second language like your ones obviously are. It's, yeah, a really, really clever app. And for, from a teacher's point of view, it's very simple by the looks of it to get set up with a deck of cards. And then straight away it opens up so many different possibilities, doesn't it? It takes you just like five minutes to prepare mm -hmm. these cards and then you have like 20 games to use it. Brilliant. How much is the app? Do we know how much it is? You mean how much? Uh, for, for the app. Is it a paid app? Is it a free app? Uh, there is a free uh, version. Uh, okay. You can create uh, the board, but you can't use the catalog. And okay. there is a um, paid version, but I'm not sure how much it costs. I don't remember. I bought it. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but if there's a free version where you can still create the boards, that, yeah. that seems like a good entry point perhaps for people who are watching this and thinking I want to give that a try. Yes, there is a free version. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. I've learned a huge amount from that presentation and that's an app that I'm going to be downloading straight after this to give it a try for myself, so thank you. Levent, can we pass over to you now in Hong Kong? And I believe you're going to share some of your video magic using clips. <laughs> Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you guys about uh, about Clips. Uh, so Clips, I mean, let's put the magic part on hold for a second. Clips <laughs> is actually um, one of my, my favorite apps that I use in my film program, uh, especially at the be beginning when uh, my students are learning about like video editing for the first time ever. It's a great like first introduction to linear film editing um, because if, if someone has never, never kind of looked at like um, uh, something like iMovie, Final Cut Pro, any kind of linear film editing system or platform, um, it can look really weird and, and really it's a it's kind of a, an abstract concept. So Clips is like just really fantastic for just really basically recording in and then <laughs> and then we see, can you guys see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you see down at the bottom, that's what you just recorded in, right? And then you can just play back. And then when you want to record more, you just add more. Let's see. There you go. And you can see down at the bottom here, it's just adding in whatever. Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> so it's and now there's the second block, the second little piece of uh, recording that I just added in. So one of the ways that I use this in the very beginning when I first start my kids off um, with you know just getting getting them into to making to creating stuff is um, introduction videos so I use introduction videos to um, first find out you know why they're taking my class because my class is an option class uh, why they've chosen film my film studies class and uh, and also tell them uh, tell me uh, something about them their hobbies uh, their interests and and you can, you can kind of use this class or so you could use this project in, in any class um, mm -hmm. and you know whatever whatever class uh, you, uh, sorry any kind of topic you can get them to just make a simple kind of introduction video or just a, a video that you use to get to know your students better and I'll show you really briefly. Um, this is kind of like some of the th some of the things that my students have made. Mm -hmm. And there's so many options. There's like filters and effects and all sorts of things that can be done. Um, and I'll show. I'll go you. I'll go into uh, how you would grab some of these filters in a second. 
And one of the one of the features that are it's really great that the kids love um, is actually the um, the captions. So kids can um, when I create videos or my kids create videos, they could add captions to theirs. Um, I think was it in the newest update they automatically do it's auto captioned. I think so. Yes, very recently. Yeah. One yeah. Of the updates. Uh, so I accidentally just tapped on this. This is one of the cool, um, one of the cool functions where you can just, if you want to record, like I've been using this recently, um, where you can kind of change your background and make it a little bit more engaging. So I've been using this particular feature to, um, to make a new series on my YouTube channel. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and hold on. And so let's go into the effects. So this is what I just recorded. These two blocks just of you guys. So we could add effects to the video that you just, that we just took of you guys and say, that's it. And then there it is. So it's just been, it's like, it's just been rotoscoped. Right. And then there's the second clip. Maybe we could add a different one to that. Um, anything else that we'd want to use? So we can do a, a more colorful version of rotoscoping. So there's the second one. Oh, you can see my shelf. There you go. So uh, if you don't know what rotoscoping, in, uh, rotoscoping is, it's basically um, an old fashioned film technique where um, you would film at first and then animators would draw over all the footage. Now it's all automatically done in, uh, in, the, in clips. Um, posters is really cool. So you may have seen in the, in the little thing that I showed of my, in the compilation of my student work, um, they're using posters. So this is a great kind of introduction to, um, to whatever they're talking about. So they could put their name, they could put whatever, um, and it starts their, starts their introduction video or whatever else that they're working on. And, uh, and then let me show you some other things. It's all sorts of features. Let's go back to so stickers and emojis and all sorts of things that kids can use. So, for example, if they use they want to use this poster, they could just grab this this emoji, and then it usually animates a lot of the things for you. Bring in the fire, please. Show me that fire. <laughs> there. Oh, okay. <laughs> that, that, fire. that should be enough. Fire, more fire. Okay, so let's record that for a second. And there we go. So usually they're animated. And so we could just kind of drag and drop and move it anywhere we want. Um, and there we go. So usually they're animated. And then <laughs> so this is like a really, really basic use yeah. of clips. Um, going to the movie magic stuff, uh, I have my trusty tripods. Uh, one of the things that you can do um, that's really fun and easy is uh, jump cuts. Raise your hand if you've used jump cuts before. Uh, tried to, tried to. All right, good, Try to, okay. It's so we're, I'm gonna do a, a live demonstration of jump cuts right here, right <laughs> All right, let's see if I can pull this off in 30 seconds or less. All right, so you're not gonna see, I'll show you the final product. Okay. Okay, so basically, I got a glass here. Yeah. Okay, some juice. I will make that glass disappear through the magic of jump cuts. All right. And let's go back to camera. Switch camera. I'm going to take off scenes. All right. Okay, this works, jump cuts works way better when you have a tripod, but you don't always have to use a tripod. If you've got a steady hand, it'll be fine as well. All right, so I'm gonna record, and all I have to do is just go, and take the glass away, glass is gone, then record again, do the same action, and then do a little handy editing. I mean, the pressure right now for this to work is, is human. Pressure, so much. Pressure is on. Oh my gosh. 
Okay. Let's see if I got it. I'm gonna look at it first before I, before I show you. Oh, magic! <laughs> there it is. I think I nailed it. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, it's like magic. That. It's magic. Look There's your movie magic. So uh, Clips is awesome for so many reasons. Um, here's another example of something I've done with students. Oh, sorry. This is my kids doing jump cuts. No <laughs> jump cut videos. Oh, nice. And then uh, here's one. Uh, that I made with my kids that was yes. pretty fun. It's kind of a mix Start a new of clip. green uh, screen. Hey, it's on. It's on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> so that's a mix of a few different things. Obviously, I had to record myself green screen. Uh, <laughs> and then no way. put it. <laughs> Uh, put, put that on the on the screen on my computer screen and play it as if it's a video and then so there's a lot more happening than just that simple kind of jump cut thing and, and so this is uh, how I've been using it recently for my YouTube channel uh, doing a little bit of app smashing so I'll record in with clips and then I'll use it to to kind of um, have a, a more engaging product because where I film in my home is just a plain white wall <laughs> <laughs> so and it's a little bit boring and so I use the scenes I use the scenes built into the clips app to create something that's a lot more engaging hey boys and girls Mr. Erdogan here and you're watching Music Moments with Mr. Erdogan and this is the show where I teach you something basic and fun that has to do with music in just a few moments <laughs> Okay, today we're going to be doing something really fun. We're going to be changing our art into music. So we'll be making so stuff I've got like a, this. I've got a music education YouTube channel, so I'm using it now um, to to create my my content or make my content a little bit more engaging, um, more engaging than just a, a plain <laughs> white wall. Um, so uh, there's a, there's so many fun uses for clips, and uh, it doesn't just have to be for like a film program. It can be for uh, a number of different. Uh, there's a number of different applications for clips. So uh, if you want to start learning how to do some film editing, start with clips. That's what I always say because it's super super easy. If you want to make some really really easy tutorials, I would say start with clips. Um, the posters and all the effects and all those other things uh, allow you to create really engaging content. Um, and that's pretty much it, I guess. Yeah, there's lots of things that you could do, and there's lots of ways, lots of ways that I use it as well. Fantastic! Thank you for giving us that that quick run through. And there was actually the magic that you promised us. So, so top marks for that. I gave you the magic. <laughs> I think at the moment, clips is is a really powerful tool to actually engage students remotely. And you alluded to that at the end of your YouTube videos, which we'll, we'll link to below. Um, and it's really such a fun and simple way, isn't it, to connect with those children to make their day a little bit more interesting. And you know, as, yeah. as teachers, it's it's a really great tool to use. Yeah, I mean, creating video can be this really scary thing, right? Mm. Creating like for with a tool like this, it, it's so easy. It makes it so much easier to just create content, um, whether or not you're creating a vlog or like an introduction or. Um, if you want to tell a story or if you want to um, tell your science teacher your understanding of whatever project that you're working on, like there's so, there's so many applications and it's so easy to just jump into it. Um, and they make it that way. They make it so it's, mm. it's easy for you to just jump right in without really uh, any prior knowledge. So um, it's, definitely, it's definitely one of my go-tos for that particular reason. Mm. Uh, and I, I love that. Uh, I know, uh, Levent, that you are also... Uh, fantastic hardcore uh, in, in filmmaking in, in general and also uh, use pro uh, advanced uh, software and, and can do everything in the film medium but it's so nice to see that for the teaching and having the focus on, on getting the joy and excitement uh, ignited with the kids to use this uh, more simple uh, software uh, I think that's uh, really nice to see that move um, a little bit like a keynote that, that, that they could easily learn more advanced software, but if we want to have the focus on, on 
a good workflow, uh, uh, a lot of excitement and creativity in the classroom. It's sometimes good to use those very user-friendly, fun apps. Um, but I must admit yeah, I that, uh, that Clips, uh, Clips was personally an app that I didn't understand uh, the first year or so. Everyone was uh, super excited in the Apple uh, Distinguished Educator community and so on about Clips. And I thought, isn't it a little bit silly? And, and uh, I could make something that would more control over what are more beautiful and, and iMovie and maybe for a final cut and so on. But I thought when I was seeing it uh, getting used by kids and how engaging it is, that really convinced me about the powerfulness of the, the app. Mm. I sometimes miss that the opportunity or the, the possibility to uh, create uh, videos in uh, landscape mode uh, and to 16 mm -hmm. format and not only square videos. I think that would yeah. be a future update that would make yeah. clips really I was, nice. I was hoping for that. There's a big the update format. recently. Yeah, there, that big update that came out just uh, last week or the week before, I was hoping that, uh, bef like before I had a chance to test it out, I was hoping that that would be in that update. Uh, but unfortunately, not yet. And it's also actually um, the square, the, the non-widescreen, the square output format is actually ideal for, for like Instagram, for, yeah. for Twitter, for any social media posts, um, mm -hmm. which... which doesn't which isn't like natively wide obviously because we're we're used to holding our phones vertically right so it it's unlikely that someone's going to turn their phone sideways to, to look at your content so using i use it actually especially for i use that square um aspect ratio for my my twitter content for um any instagram content i i keep that in mind when creating and so this app clips it kind of just it forces you to do that and it's it's beneficial for that reason too so if you're big into to social media posting and and what what have you um it's it's it forces you to 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 be in a in a portrait or sorry in um an aspect ratio that is um most accessible for for that platform no, that, that's brilliant thank you thank you so much for sharing that um, it's yeah, it's a great tool. It's a great app for children and adults alike. And and in these times when we're remote teaching, it's the perfect tool, isn't it, to share quick and easy video tutorials, video introductions, fun messages to make your children smile, all those sort of things. It, it's the perfect tool just to jump in and do that in a few moments. I, one of my favourite things in clips is when you can have your emoji put on top of your face, and it kind of mirrors your face on your on your head and shoulders. And that's a really clever little effect. And again, the children love doing that. And what we found in our school is we, we don't have photo permission to share videos and photos beyond our own school website, but the children can then make an emoji head and they can record themselves talking of that head on, and then they're able to share that in a much um, safer way. So that's something that we're kind of exploring the use of at the moment. So it, yeah, Clips is another one of these multifaceted tools which can do so much in such a simple way, isn't it? So yeah, thank you for sharing, thank you. Um, so I'll round out with the fourth and final app. Um, I must confess, I've actually changed my mind on this app backwards and forwards over the last week or two. And I was going to do an app that I'd use with my classroom, but given how things are at the moment, that didn't quite feel right. So I'm going to do a very, very quick run through of the Twitter app. And this is a strange one to be doing on an education focused YouTube series, because Twitter isn't really something that would encourage the kids to use at all. But it is something which, as adults and teachers, I think there's a lot of benefit from. So if I dive onto the Twitter app now, so you can see that you've all seen Twitter before, so you can just nod along and say, "Oh yes, it's Twitter." Look at that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> essentially, if you haven't seen this before, if you are someone who's not seen Twitter or who's for, "Oh, Twitter, that sounds awful. Don't like the sound of that." Basically, it's a very, very simple social network where you can share a, a short message, and it's a little bit like opening your window and just shouting out into the street. You just blast the message out. Anyone can find it. Anyone can follow it. Anyone can reply to you. And my initial experience of Twitter for the first few years was very much that, OK, what, what do I get out of this? I can share what's on my mind, but really, who cares? Does it really matter? Probably not. So it didn't really ever have an appeal to me. But in the last year or so, I've been looking at it in a much more kind of education technology focused way. And I've been following a lot of really interesting people. And I found that actually it's a great community of people. So I think the secret to Twitter is actually the people that you follow. So I'm gonna hold this up. Again, I'm not really showing you anything because it's it's random what's on there, it's whatever's being shared at the moment. But by choosing the right people to share, 
the chances are you're going to be seeing content that's actually interesting and relevant rather than just people who you've never met who talk about something you don't care about. So on my Twitter feed, a lot of people on there are Apple Distinguish Educators, Google Certified Educators, loads of different people in different schools around the world, primary school, secondary school teachers, head teachers, uh, a huge variety of educational focused people. And they are sharing content every day, which is really fascinating. Now, one of the most important things that I found in Twitter is actually using it to ask a question and to see what responses come back. So that sounds really simple. And of course, you can ask a question. But if you're following people who are like minded and you ask that question, the chances are they'll actually reply. So you might want to say, oh, I don't know, how how am I going to make this lesson more engaging for my children? How can I deliver this one remotely? How can I you know, ensure that this goes well? Have you got any tips for using this? And you can put a tweet out and you can get dozens of replies very quickly, depending on who you're following. So I did a staff training session um, last term about using green screen in iMovie. And I put a tweet out on the morning of the um, training saying, look, I'm going to do a green screen training session today. Has anyone got any examples I can use to kind of inspire my colleagues and show them what's possible? And within about half an hour, I had 20 different examples of green screen videos from all around the world, from all these different people. And I was able to then show my colleagues all of these examples. And suddenly it wasn't just, oh, do we have to learn this today? It was like, oh, my goodness, I want to go and do that. I I could do that myself. Can I do that on my iPad? Is that really how it works, Jacob? And that little message suddenly brought back responses from like minded people who were keen to share what they're doing. So Twitter, I think, is a great place to ask questions, to have that community and that support. And at the moment, as educators, we're very disconnected in terms of actually, you know, we're not not in the same place as other teachers anymore. We're not in our school. We're not in our classroom. We're mostly all working from home. And Twitter is a really good way of staying in touch with those people. And it's a really, really good way of getting ideas. And so the last thing I want to show you on the Twitter app very quickly, I've not shown you anything, I'm aware of that. But one thing I do want to show you is the idea of bookmarking tweets. So this is one here from Chris, and Chris has been doing um, some tutorial videos on Logic Pro, and he's actually been doing it in clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bookmark that one for later, because I think that's something relevant to what I'm doing. So I'm going to press the share button, and then I'm going to press add tweet to bookmarks. And now that is going to be in the bookmark section of Twitter. And if I scroll down there, I've actually now got an entire feed of ideas that I like that I want to use. So now I'm not just having messages seen and sent by completely random people. All of these things in my bookmarks are things that actually I could do with my children. So I'm now building this library of ideas and inspiration and all these really rich and exciting experiences that I can then take with me when I go back to school and start implementing these ideas. So if you haven't used Twitter before, think about who you're going to follow. Search for educators, search for people doing your subject and just follow as many people as you can bookmark things that you like, ask questions. And if you've bookmarked something, or if you see something that kind of catches your interest, but you're not quite sure how it was done, send that person a message. More often than not, people seem to be really generous at replying and explaining things on Twitter. And it's a really good way of actually learning and your own personal development. So it's a rubbish demo, I'm very aware of that, but hopefully it's more about kind of the idea of how we can use Twitter as a community. And if you're someone who hasn't used it before or who is a bit sceptical about the whole social networking side of things, I'd urge you just to go and have a look. Even if you don't send messages, you can still follow people on there. So, yeah, in you a know, nutshell, that's Twitter. I, uh, I'll chime in here. It's not a rubbish demo. I, I've been doing this by sending myself a private message with the, the tweet. So, like, sharing the tweet. You know how you share it with oh, somebody yeah. in a private message? I've been doing that uh, just by sending sending it to myself. I actually didn't even know about this bookmark function. Oh, um, uh, and uh, I'm on Twitter like quite a bit. So um, there you go. It's 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 been as it a valuable little lesson there. Oh well, I'm glad someone's got something from it. I need to film or I think or, or the whole point that, that people can choose quality of the feed by the quality of the people that they they mm. follow. It's really important to find educators yeah. that are inspiring, that are positive. And, and I think some pe- people, they say, oh, social media can easily be this big uh, double star fire and, and negative people and people complaining about everything. And I think if we should 
remember our own uh, attitude uh, on on social media, but also on Twitter. You can you can choose who to follow mm. and who to defollow. And <laughs> I think actually Twitter can be a very very supportive, uh, nice uh, community. Absolutely, nice. it's, it's, it's who you follow, isn't it? It's the yeah. people you choose to follow and that feed that you choose to create, because that's the content you're going to be seeing. And if you're following people that you're not interested in who are doing things that aren't relevant to you or people who are you know very negative or you're gonna that's gonna love off on you so it's it's curating that content to what you want it to be and yes you never know what someone's going to share but the likelihood is if it's someone that you're interested in and someone who does things that you're interested in then that content is hopefully going to be quite relevant to you and yeah the bookmarking thing event is a really simple thing to do what I found in now is I've got a huge list of bookmarks and I'm struggling to organize them. So I'm now taking my bookmarks and putting them into a different app called Wakelet. And I'm just making a different board for each subject. So science, maths, computing. And I'm then putting those tweets in there and taking them out of my bookmarks. So that's kind of one of my jobs during this remote learning period is to try and organize some of those ideas so that in the future I can go, oh, OK, history. Let's have a look in that folder. And all the tweets relevant to that should, should be in there. So, yeah, it's a really great tool. And it's, yeah, another one of those ones that are completely free to use. And I think as educators, it's a great network and, and support system, like you said, Jacob. OK, can I just say a huge thank you to all three of you for your contributions to today's Smashing Apps. It's been really interesting learning what apps you're using. Jacob, you talked about Keynote, and Keynote is one of those apps that's free. If you own an Apple device, you can get Keynote. You can jump straight in, and you can use it for so much more than just presentation. There's an animation tool. It's a graphic design tool. It's a lesson presentation tool. It's, it's everything. Thank you for sharing that and sharing your top tips as well. Alina, thank you for sharing Bitsport, an app I hadn't come across, but an app I've downloaded already as we've been talking, and I can't wait to give that a try and get my head around what we can use that for in our classroom. And I hope people watching this as well might see that as being a really powerful tool to when they go back to their classes to use as well. And Levent, thank you so much for sharing Clips. Clips, again, like you know, it's a free app if you've got an iPad or an iPhone. And it's such a fun and easy way of creating those engaging videos, whether it be for remote learning or back in the classroom. And it's a great way for children to create videos as well. So all three of those apps, super helpful, super interesting. I've shared Twitter as well as a little way of collaborating and engaging with the community community while we're separate from the community and I hope we'll get some some value from that as well but thank you all three of you for your time I know it's been a long episode I'm sure Levent you're desperate to get to bed it's probably very very late <laughs> it's um, getting close, it's getting close. <laughs> but honestly thank you all so much and I hope to see you all in real life and to chat again soon oh awesome. yeah have a good day thank you very much thanks for having us